Teardown review time. Got some uh, Pi Picos from AliExpress. At least they claim to be Pi Picos. I think they're fakes in some way, but they might be usable. Uh, I got two of them for $5.50 with free shipping from China to North America. If I was to compare that to the local distributor in my country, the authorized dealer, they went five sixty five each, which is, you know, not too much difference money, but where they get killed is the uh, shipping and handling. Uh, almost 10 times as much on per unit price if I try to buy them from my uh, country's distributors. So, um, now, I'm sure this is not an authorized product, uh, but here it is. Uh, but the question, of course, is, is it actually usable, or is it really truly an utter fake uh, and unusable? Let's um, compare it down to, this is the real Pico uh, from an authorized distributor. Let's just compare them. Uh, the silicon looks, the, the really important silicon, the uh, custom design chipped from Raspberry, uh, is here, um, and it looks legitimate, but we'll take it apart. Uh, we'll run some programs first, see if it acts the same, and then we'll take it apart down to the die level. Uh, the memory chip is definitely different. Uh, we're going to find some interesting uh, native Chinese supply chain vendors you've probably never heard of. Really big push by the Chinese government right now to become completely independent of Western silicon. Uh, same thing with the power supply regulator. Uh, you can see it's actually a different part, so they've gone through the trouble of, even though it says copyright Pi Pico, um, and it almost looked like the same trace as they've gone in and opened up the design files um, and modified it. You can see the power section is slightly different. So, without further ado, let's uh, plug this uh, this uh, fake in first, uh, put a program onto it, see if we can get it to run something at least, see if it's useful, uh, and then we'll take the silicon down all the way to the die level and uh, take a peek. So, of course, the question is, uh, does it actually work? And the answer seems to be yes. I just quickly loaded up uh, a micro Python onto it and uh, running a little classic uh, Python program, uh, which blinks the LED. Uh, and as you can see, it's just blinking away beautifully. Uh, seems to be just fine as a Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, but just to be sure, why not take that chip off and let's de-encapsulate it and see what it looks like. Well, here's a die we've seen before. Uh, it is the Raspberry Pi uh, RP2040. Um, this, of course, is the logo of the company which designed it. Um, and if we scroll over here, we'll find a die marking. Uh, RP2, I think, was the second piece of silicon they tried designing successfully. Um, it does match up everything uh, that a legitimate RP2040 would look like. You might think to yourself, why in the world would anyone clone a 25 cent chunk of silicon? Uh, but you, the Chinese are quite, uh, quite amazing sometimes what they will clone. But it does appear to be a legitimate part uh, from uh, Raspberry Pi. The metal lines here uh, are the power distribution, so all the digital logic is under the golden area here. Um, the analog functions, especially high speed stuff like USB, this is the USB 5 sitting here. It doesn't get metal because that would uh, disturb its operation. Uh, under here, uh, there's some lower speed analog functions. Uh, well, heck, why don't we just go to the next uh, uh, diagram? This is what's known as top metal, uh, but if we take the metal away, we can see a classic picture of the polysilicon. Um, the actual processor sit here, is, this is a, an array of gates. Uh, it's very indistinct because I've taken just a single uh, photograph at a low resolution. Um, but you can make out the important bits. Uh, there's two processors on a 2040, and each one, I believe, has associated uh, memory with it. That's what's going on here. Uh, there's going to be a boot ROM. Uh, Generally, it looks like the boot ROM here. There's a two phase lock loops, one for each processor core. They sit down here. Um, analog power like function sitting here. Uh, I think there's a non die regular to this one. Oh, that's probably an analog digital converter here. Uh, sorry, you, you can't tell from the indistinct pictures, but if you ever study one in more detail, um, it has all the hallmarks of it. And, and then, of course, you can see the IO clusters, uh, they all look the same. Because once, of course, you design four IOs, and you just keep them placing them down. Uh, and oops, let me just go back to that picture. Um, and this little dotted pattern is known as CMP or chemical mechanical polishing. When they do each layer, they often will polish it to make it plainer for the next layer. Uh, but if there's nothing there, they have to put little dots down. So that those are a little bit. Oh, and we can see, of course, RP2, uh, B0 also in the polysilicon. So yeah, looks like the uh, vendor has a legitimate uh, 2040 die on their hands. And quite frankly, the Pi Pico, um, uh, most of all the functionality sits here. So looks like at least a legitimate controller. All right, let's look at the uh, Quad Spy device. This is a photomicrograph of that. Um, 
the memory array is here on the top and the controller is on the bottom. And that's pretty standard for a quad spy. Much more interesting is the part number BY25Q16. You can directly trace that to a company uh, in China called Boya. Uh, and of course, you've probably never heard of Boya. Um, established in 2014, uh, China's making a huge press to have absolute uh, supply chain independence. It's a fabulous uh, semiconductor company. Um, you can see for 2018 they had 100 million, and then of course 2020, 190 million doubled. I haven't found their five year ones. They don't seem to be publicly traded, uh, but they have access to 55 nanometer 12 inch fab. Um, which is all reasonably competitive. Uh, the part number was a 25Q FS16, shows in their sharp form catalog here, 50 nanometers, and uh, this is a, a false color dye of the polysilicon. I, I threw it into GIMP to tease out uh, the differences in the color from the photographs. It makes it easier to see things. You can see the banks of the knoer here, the, the columns coming down and the rows going this way. Um, and of course, the classic control circuitry below. Uh, there's going to be a voltage uh, multiplier circuit uh, in this device. Um, I suspect that sits here. You got to create a fairly high voltage program in NOR flash. Uh, otherwise, very typical uh, of a NOR flash. The real uh, keen observation here is, of course, complete supply chain independence for this particular part. So this is the voltage regulator, uh, the top metal photograph. A little tricky to see what's going on. Uh, you can see there's probably a FET structure up here. You can see that line cutting across the FET so they can soft turn on. Let's just uh, go to the uh, a picture with the metal taken away and go back and forth. Um, let's see. Okay, so this is a giant FET up here. Well, it's actually many FETs, but they're always in parallel, so they act like one uh, power FET. That's the thing which uh, switches the current onto the inductor to change the voltage. If we zoom into one of these square structures here, we can see an interdigitated uh, structure. Uh, this is a diode, and uh, it's a clamping diode for the IOs. They just go back and forth between the inputs. So here we can, of course, see the paths, one here, one here, one here, one here. Um, and if you switch between them, you can see that some of the paths, which are inputs, have uh, protection diodes on them. Uh, this is uh, stitched in a mini photograph. That's why, if you're wondering why it's kind of blurry in the middle here, I didn't have the microscope quite focused. Um, all these ghostly areas, though, uh, basically are diffusion wells uh, where they constructed the uh, transistors which control uh, the voltage regulator. As you can see in a modern regulator, about one third of the die is actually dedicated towards the actual control, um, and the rest is either the actual switching FET or just simply I.O. pads. So uh, this regulator is definitely different than what was used on the Raspberry Pi uh, Pico I tore down uh, many years ago. So. Uh, again, I'm sure this is a locally uh, Chinese company. Uh, no die marking, unfortunately, can't sort down anything beyond uh, the fact that it's, uh, uh, it looks like a very classic voltage regulator. Well, just for completeness, this is a, a diode. Uh, there is a diode on the assembly, and um, you can, of course, see the diffusion layer. You can see that there's the, the one pad here for one side, and there's going to be one uh, on the other for the uh, anode and cathode. And uh, if you're wondering whether that, where that was, that was the diode. So uh, there we go. That is what's on this Raspberry Pi Pico I grabbed off AliExpress. Uh, it looks like it's entirely legitimate in the sense that it's the right controller, so you shouldn't have any troubles running uh, code on it. Um, it. It's no surprise that they've made one of these. You can buy these parts uh, commercially. Raspberry doesn't limit them. So, um, However, if I was a distributor, I'd be a bit disturbed because you do all this education work for this company to keep uh, people buying your products. Uh, and then, of course, somebody in China goes off and uh, does a clone, so those poor distributors uh, who provide a lot of hand-holding uh, never see a, a dime of uh, profit, but such is the nature of business. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if so, I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one.